Welcome to Lessons from the Playroom. In this podcast, Lisa Dion will help you explore the little things that make a big difference in play therapy. Lisa is a founder of Synergetic Play Therapy. You know, sometimes therapists get all caught up trying to study big theories and mastering techniques to help children like me. But sometimes it's the little things we show you along the way that make the biggest difference. Join Lisa as she teaches you some of the little lessons that children are trying to communicate to you so that you can help us in the best ways possible. And on behalf of all the kids you work with, thanks for listening and believing in us. Let's get started. Hi, listeners. I am so excited for you to join me for this podcast episode. Um, I'm going to introduce my guest here in a second, but what I will share is that when I when I logged on to say hi, there was such an amazing um, surprise uh, waiting for me on the other end, um, and I was just filled with with uh, joy and delight and an urge to connect, which is um, such an important piece because what we're talking about today are ways to engage the child and tips and techniques um, for that initial session. So I have with me today um, the one and only Leanna Lowenstein. For those of you that are not familiar with Leanna's work, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a registered clinical social worker, a certified play therapist supervisor, a certified trauma-focused CBT therapist, She's been working with children and families in the Toronto area since 1988. Um, She has 12 books. Yes, 12 books, everyone. Um, And I am going to say more about this uh, as we as we go into our conversation, but actually have with me in my hands um, her her latest book, which we are going to be talking about. And I'm so excited to share it with you. She is a dynamic speaker who has provided um, trainings throughout North America and abroad, including China, South Africa, Israel, England, Turkey, New Zealand, Australia, and I know, Leanna, there are so many more countries that are not listed on this. Um, She is the winner of the Monica Herbert Award for Outstanding Contribution to Play Therapy in Canada. Um, Leanna is a mover and a shaker in this field, and Leanna, thank you so much for joining. if you want to come on and say hello. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, so for people who cannot, who are listening and can't actually see the screen, I am donning my green wig. Yes. Um, and this, this green wig was kind of born, the idea was born um, when COVID first hit. And of course, like all therapists around the world, we were forced to transition from in-person sessions to online sessions. And I was thinking to myself, what can I do to sort of create that, you know, immediate playful connection with my younger clients? Mm -hmm. You know, when they come to see me in my office, they're, you know, immediately captivated by my play therapy room, Mm -hmm. the puppets and the art area and the dollhouse and the Mr. Potato Head and all that stuff. Um, And so I was really looking for, for a way to. Um, be playful, connect, lower their anxiety level about coming to that first session. And the green wig has been a huge hit. And not just in terms of building that initial rapport with the child, but with the parents too, which is so important. So I always get a giggle from the child, but I also get giggles from the parents. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, when we're engaging the child, we also have to engage the parents, of course. Well, I had that reaction when I, when I logged on here and I went, ah! Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was like so, so delightful. And for those of you that cannot see this wig, let me just tell you, this isn't just a green wig. This is a very fluorescent green wig <laughs> and it's full of curls. So um, it's, it's very vibrant. It's, um, it's very, very fun. So yeah. thank you so much for just demonstrating this very thing that we're going to be um, talking about. Um, and truly, I'm so grateful that you are here to have this conversation with me. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm so pleased your podcast is such an important contribution to the field out there. I know how many people all over the world um, listen or view it, and it's just an invaluable learning opportunity. Well, thanks, Leanna. Well, let's let's jump into your, um, your you have such a wealth of, of knowledge. So help us wrap our mind around, yeah, how do we... How do we engage children in this first in this first session? 
So, you know, of course, many kids in that initial session feel really anxious about coming to a therapist um, and they may be really reluctant to start talking about their thoughts and their feelings. And so, you know, I think our job as, um, you know, a play therapist is to um, make that immediate connection, build rapport, lower their anxiety level. Um, And so, you know, I think that there are, of course, some techniques, and I'll, I can share some later on. But um, what I really want to begin by by saying is that um, there's a wonderful article by David Crenshaw and Suan Kenyanoziska, both of whom I know you've had on your podcast, and I can't remember the exact title, but it talks about the difference between being and doing. So the being, of course, is all about therapeutic presence. You know, it's how we are with the child. It's, um, you know, it's conveying warmth and acceptance and respect. And it's the smile on our face. Uh, You know, if I were to go into the waiting room to meet a child for the first time, you know, and say hello and not have a smile on my face, well, that wouldn't be conveying that warmth. So even though I have this really cool green wig on, well, it wouldn't really be effective if I wasn't conveying that warmth and, 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 and using those skills in terms of myself. So there's the, the, the being, and then there's the doing, the, the, what, do we, what do we actually do? The, and that sort of talks about some techniques, which again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about. So I really wanna emphasize that both are important. The techniques, the doing, aren't gonna be effective without the being, the therapeutic presence and, and how we use ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I can think that's the first thing I wanted to emphasize. Um, and then, so, so, you know, once I've sort of made that initial connection with the child, let's say in the waiting room, whether it's, you know, coming out in a green wig or coming on, on screen for an online session with the green wig or using, you know, a puppet, uh, you know, like, you know, I might have like my little turtle puppet that I'm holding up right now. Um, you know, which I might go out and I love the turtle puppet, especially because for the little shy kids, you know, you can go into the shell and so using puppets. Um, so those are a couple of strategies to just kind of, again, make that connection, be playful, um, and engage the child. And then once in my play therapy office, um, there's a couple of other things that I sort of do it, it immediately. Um, I do have a fidget basket in my office because, you know, so many kids are, you know, highly anxious, maybe dysregulated. And so having that outlet, um, and I don't just have like one or two, I have like a basket mm-hmm. so kids can choose one. And I have ones that are geared more to little kids, one, you know, some that are geared to the teen clients. Um, and they get to choose one for the session and then the basket gets put away so that, you know, the, they don't, they're not distracted by, you know, every two seconds wanting to change their fidget item. Um, I also have a welcome letter that I, I use and I, I vary it, I adapt it to depending on the child. But in that welcome letter, I kind of explain, you know, who I am and what my job is. And I also define the main presenting issue. So let's say the child is coming to see me um because of you know divorce um then i would you know say you know you're coming to see me uh to talk about your the, you know mom and dad's divorce and then i'll define divorce and then the letter will go on and i i i like to include that and define the presenting issues the child knows you know i know what the main issue is um i'm the one saying it so the child doesn't have to sit there with you you know, what do they know? And should I have to say it? Do I have to say it? What are we talking about today? So I'm just kind of opening up the dialogue and setting that tone for openness. Can I ask a, qu- a question about this? Because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm envisioning this and it's really cool. Is this something that you read to the child? Yeah. yeah. So I read it to the child. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes on the first page of their scrapbook. So all my clients who come to see me get their own scrapbook. And we're not talking about their like, you know, $50 scrapbooks. We're talking about those little cardboard, you know, three ring, you know, little binder things. Yeah. Um, and then um, either I take a picture of the child f- for the cover of their scrapbook, or um, I give the child a choice. They could take a selfie, mm-hmm. um, which again, is just another way to help clients feel in control, have some choice, you know, um, and then I print the picture and that goes on the cover of their scrapbook so that their scrapbook really feels like, oh, this is mine. This is me. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then, um, you know, we, I do some kind of rapport building, um, you know, technique. Um, and I, you know, I have different ones and, you know, I'll choose, I'll choose one that I think would appeal to the child. Uh-huh. Can you give us a couple little examples, just as we're following along with you as you're mapping this out for us? Just yeah. based on maybe even like children, like a child that's like super anxious or a child that's, you know, a bit more shut down or I don't know, just different, different ideas. Yeah. Um, so um, one for a younger child um, is, um, is, is simple. It's a paper bag puppet. So we each create our own paper bag puppet. Um, and I have a whole bunch of different art supplies, you know, googly eyes and colored felt and, um, you know, colored string. So we each make our own paper bag puppet. And while we're making the puppets, we're chit-chatting. So that in and of itself, mm-hmm. you know, gives the client a task to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're chit-chatting. So that's part of the whole rapport building process. And then we use our puppets to talk to each other. And so my puppet is kind of um, interviewing the child's puppet. Um, and I say to the child, so you can use your puppet to talk for you. And I'll use my puppet to talk for me. And then I'm asking the child getting to know you questions. And I have, you know, different types of questions. I call them phase one and phase two questions. So phase one questions are easy peasy, no brainer, no threat level questions like, what's your name? How old are you? What's your favorite color? Um, What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Um, What's one of your favorite toys? Um, And as I see the child, engaging and I'm really watching and being very attuned to the child Mm -hmm. to watch for do they you know are they talking to me are they engaging do they seem relaxed then I might move to what I call phase two questions which I might say what's something that makes you feel happy what's Mm -hmm. something that makes you feel sad Mm -hmm. what's something that makes you feel scared Mm -hmm. so it's both a rapport building um, intervention, but it's also I'm beginning my assessment process, which is something we also want to do, you know, in that initial session. So that's one example. Um, another uh, example is uh, what I call the, the I don't know, I don't care, I don't want to talk about a game. Hmm. And we all know the I don't know child, right? So <laughs> yes, you know do. the I don't know child? We do. Yes. We do, right? We, do. we know this child. In our field. Yes. Um, and so, of course, I came up with this technique um, as a way to break through the, the I don't know barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and there's different ways that I might pl- play this game with the child. But I'll say we're going to play a game to get to know each other. It's called I don't know. I don't care. I don't want to talk about it. We're going to take turns asking each other questions, questions to get to know each other better. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you answer the question, you get, and you can I've used a potato, potato chips, mm-hmm. or more recently, um, I've been using colored beads or different Lego, and they can earn beads or Lego, mm-hmm. uh, and then make something out of it at the end. Um, so, you know, you, you get, you know, three beads when you answer the question. Um, but if you say, I don't know, or you don't ask the question, then oh, you don't get the beads, you don't get the Lego. Mm-hmm. Now, most kids, you know, will engage in this. Um, and again, it's a way to, um, to get to know the client. And, um, and again, you're thinking about phase one, phase two questions. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say I were to ask the client a question, then they say, I don't know, or they don't want to answer it. Oh. Well, there's always a way to respond, right? So I might say, well, you know what, that tells me that you know yourself really well. You know what you feel comfortable sharing with me and what you want to keep private for now. And that's okay. Um, Similarly, if the client asks me a question that I don't feel is appropriate for me to answer, I might model for the client setting boundaries. Like, just like you get to decide what you feel comfortable sharing with me, I get to decide what I feel comfortable sharing with you. Probably super honoring. Yeah. So that's another one. And then um, another uh, technique um, uh, that's actually in, in the, the new book. And this was the, so the new book is a compilation of 75 activities contributed by child and family therapists from all over the world. It's an incredibly creative collection. So the book is, right now. Oh, there it is. The book. There it is. There it is. Uh, so Lisa's holding up the book cover for those of you who can't see the screen. It's Assessment and Treatment Activities for Children, Adolescents, and Families, Volume 4. Four. This is the fourth in this series. Four. Four. So 75 activities from all over the world, such a creative um, resource. And one of 
one of the activities that, that I've been using quite a lot in my own practice um, is called the Dice Drawing Game by um, Beth Waka, uh, I hope I'm not doing service to her last name, uh, Waka Bayashi, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, and so you first roll the dice and uh, I won't go, get into the whole specifics of it, but basically you're asking each other, getting to know you questions, but you have to draw your answer, mm -hmm. which is a great one for those kids who, those no talk kids, mm -hmm. the kids who are just really kind of don't want to, you know, verbalize a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So it's a, again, a way to get to know one another um, by drawing your answers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, draw um, something you like to do. Uh, draw, um, you know, your favorite vacation spot, draw, you know, and then you have to guess, of course. Mm -hmm. And because you're both doing the same thing, it puts each other on, you know, the same sort of um, level, right? Which also I think can be really effective. All right, listeners, don't go anywhere. More to come after this short break. Hey there, need new tools for your playroom? Check out playtherapysupply.com. Find thousands of items to enhance your client's play therapy experience. Everything from toys, sand trays, sand tray miniatures, books, games, and more, all at low everyday prices. Plus, get free shipping with orders of $50 or more. Visit playtherapysupply.com to get all of your play therapy supplies today. And then another one, which is more active, because, you know, when kids come in and they're feeling really anxious, um, you want to you wanna do something that's more active to channel that energy into a positive outlet. So for those kind of really anxious, more dysregulated kids who have to just kind of get up and move, um, one is called, how about you? So we play standing up and we throw a ball back and forth. So, um, I might start by saying, okay, we're gonna play a game to get to know each other. It's called, how about you? So I'll start. I like to, and then I'll say what, something I like to do. I like to go to the beach in the summer. How about you? And then I'll throw the ball to the child. The child will catch it. And then they'll say something they like to do. And then they'll say, how about you? And it'll go back to me. And it goes back and forth a few times. So again, so I, you know, when you're doing the ball activity like that, that in and of itself, in and of itself is facilitating connection, right? You're throwing a ball back and forth. You're maintaining eye contact. You're being playful. Again, referring back to the whole concept of being and doing. Um, if I were to just kind of very unenthusiastically without a smile on my face, throw the ball to the client, how about you? Mm -hmm. That's not gonna be effective, right? It's how you're using these techniques. Um, that's, that's so very, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are a few, um, you know, a few ideas of some of the rapport building techniques I might use. Yeah. You know, as you're talking, I've, I've always had this idea of, um, you know, a technique or a protocol is just a technique or a protocol, but someone has to bring it to life. Yes. And, and that's what I'm hearing you say. It's like these, these are, it's great to have these ideas. It's great to have ideas on what to do, but, but we have to bring the magic to it, right? We have to, we have to bring it to life. And I'm also hearing you say, we have to do it in a way that's really attuned to the client. Right? Yes. We really have to be watchful and which helps us know how to say it how to, how to do it. And, and I love that you're emphasizing both and not just, here's a bunch of things that you can do because that's not where the safety is, right? Exactly. The, exactly. The, the it's so, it's so important. Right. Yeah. One of the, um, you know, one of the concepts that I talk a lot about in my trainings is the technique is not the therapy. Uh -huh. It's merely a tool to facilitate the therapeutic process. Mm. Um, so, it's what we do with the technique that, as you just said, that's going to make it a therapeutic intervention. So mm -hmm. playing a ball game, throwing a ball back and forth and asking questions, that's not therapeutic. That's not therapy. It's what you do with that that makes it therapeutic. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're doing an activity, you always want to think about, well, how am I, well, first of all, why am I using this activity with this child in this session? Mm -hmm. And how am I going to use this technique to facilitate the therapeutic process? Mm -hmm. what, what, how do I need to introduce it? How am I going to process it? Mm -hmm. what am I going, how am I going to respond when a client says ABC, right? Because 
you know, if you're asking the client a question, let's say, let's say um, it's, you know, what's one of your favorite vacation spots? And the client says, oh, um, well, I love uh, going to the beach in Florida. Well, I don't want to then just bombard with another question. I would say, oh, you know, tell me about when you went to Florida and what did you like doing when you were in Florida? Um, You know, so you want to follow up the questions with further exploratory questions to, again, facilitate that dialogue um, and help the client be able to reveal more about themselves. I imagine that there is a listener as we're having this conversation that is wondering, okay, what about those children that are so anxious that they don't want to come into the playroom? Yes. Or they're so anxious that they don't want to come on uh, on screen. Like what you know? What if what if the green you know the green wig? Uh, like it's they're still like I'm. I love it and right like yes. cool and um, yes. how do we help that child that's just so so nervous to even yeah. just even even begin the journey of coming in? Yeah, such a good question. So let me. Let me talk about those two different scenarios because I think two different responses. So let's first talk about, um, you know, the child who doesn't want to come into the playroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first of all, it de- there's, you know, I can't give a totally generic answer because it depends. Yeah. Um, but let's say it's a younger child. Um, I might uh, just begin by kind of um, chit-chatting with the parents. Like I might sort of sit down on the floor and just kind of talk with the parents a little bit to let the child to give the child some time to kind of suss me out right as they see me talking with the parents um then you know they begin to relax so that's sort of one thing I want to say um I might um I have another technique that I I I sometimes use that I call the sunglass technique so I'll come out so instead of you know the green wig I might come into the waiting room with I have like a I have a box filled with about 20 different pairs of sunglasses all kinds of wacky tacky sunglasses that I've collected over the years throughout my travels. So I'll, I'll choose a pair that I think might appeal to the client I'm going out to meet. So I have like these like, you know, Superman ones, for example, go out there. And of course the client will look at me with the sunglasses. They'll usually look giggle and I'll say, Oh, hi, you know, hi, Lisa. Hi, my name's Leanna. And the client, and I'll say, oh, I can see you're looking at my sunglasses. Aren't they cool? Well, guess what, Lisa? I have a box filled with about 20 different pairs of sunglasses. So why don't you come with me into my special room and you can rummage through the box of sunglasses and you can put on a pair. And usually, you know, kids will be really excited to like, you know, trot off with me into the playroom. Yeah. Now, if not, I might turn to the parent and say, mom, dad, you know, parent, um, how about you come with, come with Lisa and let's all together go through, let's all look through the sunglasses. And so with the parent, you know, and, and, with, and I don't give any expectation for the child to have to talk. So we'll just all be like putting on different sunglasses, have a mirror. We can make funny faces into the mirror with the different sunglasses. We can take selfies Um, So there's no expectation for the child to actually talk, but we're engaging, we're connecting on that playful level. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, sort of one example. I might also bring my fidget box out into the playroom, Mm -hmm. uh, out into the uh, waiting room, or even the, you know, the sunglasses and sort of, so bring something from the playroom into the waiting room Mm -hmm. and can begin the session out there where the child might feel a little bit more, you know, a little bit more relaxed, a little safer. Okay. Now, for the kiddo who, you know, for online therapy, for the kids who don't want to come on screen, um, one, one strategy that I've used, I call it chit chat, chat mm-hmm. as in chat box. Ah, um, yeah. So rather than having to come on screen, I'll say, okay, we're going to, this is a game that I, I you know, I'll, I'll say, I, I play uh, another, another kid around your age, you know, introduced me to this idea and it worked really well. So I want to try it with you and let's see if you like this. Um, so I call it chit chat. We're going to ask each other questions. We can't answer by, you know, by verbally talk, you know, answering. We have to type our answer in the chat box. And so again, we go, you know, we, we only sort of ask questions through the chat box. Mm-hmm. And it's a way to, again, for those kids who, because there are some kids who, for whatever reason, they're just feeling too anxious to come on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's another way to just, again, playfully use a strategy 
And you want to be really um, kind of careful about the types of questions you ask to those clients and keep it very, um, uh, you know, very neutral. Yeah. Well, I would imagine because we don't have we don't have the ability to really register how did that land. We don't, cause we don't have the, the verbal or the nonverbal cues if their camera right. is, is off and even the verbal cues if they're talking. And so I think that's a, a great reminder to, if all you're going off of is chit chat, go slow. Yes. Yeah. 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 I also think that, um, you know, um, some, some kids um, respond really well to bibliotherapy they don't want to talk about themselves, but they'll talk about a character in a story or a character in a TV show. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there's lots of great um, books out there, that, you know, first session books. And I especially love, you know, in terms of more recent books, Lynn Louise Wonders, uh, Miss Piper mm-hmm. series of books for younger kids is, is great. Um, for older clients, um, you know, I might I might show, um, you know, I might show, you know, uh, let's, you know, we might use my, my phone to go online and say, can you show me, like, find a clip, let's say on YouTube of one of your favorite TV shows Mm -hmm. and, you know, or find a clip that has a character that reminds you of your, your, you know, your mom. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, focusing on the TV show, the clip, the character in the TV show, so you're vicariously dealing with the client's issues indirectly by talking about the TV show, the character. Mm-hmm. So that's another strategy, I think. Uh-huh. So at what point, or is there a point in that first session that you would then move into more of the, okay, we're going to work now on the reason why that you are here? Or do you really treat that first session as a, we're going to establish safety and we're really going to get to know each other. Um, Well, so let me just say a few more things about some other things that I do before I sort of begin that assessment, because I I do actually begin my assessment in the first session. But a few other things that I I do in the first session is um, so um, I have um, like a a calm box um, Mm -hmm. in my office. I used to have like a whole calm corner with a rocking chair when I had a bigger space. The rocking chair was such a, you know, such an amazing space for kids to self-regulate. Um, but I do have like a, a calm box. Um, and, um, uh, and, and it's very sort of multi-sensory. Um, it's got, you know, it's like slime and, you know, and fidgets and that kind of stuff, but like, you know, feelings uh, chart um, and different things. Um, pillow blanket. Um, and so I'll, I'll, you know, for a child who's coming to see me, who let's say comes from a, you know, really, you know, an anxious place or, you know, traumatized child, um, then I'll introduce them to, you know, the, the safe box. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll say, I'll give some examples of when kids might want to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and then we'll come up with a signal, you know, so, um, usually, you know, kids go like this, they put their hand up like a stop sign and say, okay, I want to stop right now. And I want to go and use, you know, go look through this, the safe box and find something that will, that, that will comfort me. Yeah. So I might introduce that. Uh-huh. Um, for some kids, again, who are highly anxious, we might make slime together in the session. Again, very tactile. We're chit chatting as we're doing it. Um, and that sensory experience, I think, is very self-regulating, self-soothing. So once the ch- once we've sort of done that piece and the child is engaged, then I will begin my assessment. And that, that's a whole other topic, <laughs> you know, but I do have a whole assessment protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, that initial assessment activity, um, you know, is one that is relatively, you know, non-threatening. Mm-hmm. Um, that will help me begin to really assess what's what's going on for the child. Yeah. But I don't sort of move to that until we've done some rapport building in the child. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can see that the child is at ease. Well, and even as you're uh, introducing these different activities, even though it's not a formal assessment, there, there is an assessment that is that's going on as we're getting a sense of 
how ready, I imagine, how ready is the child or how willing is the child to connect or how anxious is the child or how shut down is the child. So um, it's, it's, it's sort of cool at your sort of weaving these sort of mini assessments, even at the very beginning, at least that's what I, that's what I'm hearing um, yes. is happening also, even though that might not be the primary focus right up front and the focus being more on connection, but, but there's still an assessment thing in there, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. Cause there's so much going on that you want to be watching um, and really kind of listening, watching, listening, mm-hmm. being in tune. Um, and um, um, all of the, most of the techniques that I've just talked about, the rapport building techniques, mm-hmm. paper bag puppets, how about you, um, the I don't know game, the dice drawing game. Once you've sort of asked some of the more getting to know you type questions, then as I said, you can shift to the phase two type questions, mm-hmm. right? So let's say you're playing the how about you. First, it's, you know, I love to blah, blah, blah. How about you, right? Um, and then you can move into, you know, I feel happy when I... Um, you know, when it's my birthday and I get a gift, mm-hmm. uh, I, you know, and how about you, mm-hmm. you know, and then I feel sad when, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's raining outside and I can't go, um, go out, go out for a walk. How about you? Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, you can, you can, these assess, these rapport building techniques can also serve as, um, playful, non-threatening assessment strategies as well. Mm -hmm. So awesome. This is one of the things that I love so much about Juliana. You are like the, the, the idea person. You have so many different creative ideas and creative um, interventions. It's what I, can we talk about your book for a second? Let's talk about your book. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I have in my hand volume four and I've shared with you before, you know, I have, I have the first three. My favorite is uh, volume three. I cannot wait to read volume four. Maybe volume four will turn into my, into my new favorite, but I love them so much because it is truly just one creative idea after another. And it, to me, it just fills the mind up with so many different possibilities and strategies so that when we're in the room with our clients and, and, and we are tuning and we realize we need an intervention right now, or we, you know, this would be helpful to do this, or I have a client coming in with this. How could I approach this? I mean, the book is just one suggestion after another and they're sound and they're research informed and I just really appreciate these books and I'm really excited that volume four has just come out. Thank so I am, I am plugging this, everyone plugging it, plugging it, plugging it. I'm going to say it again. It's assessment and treatment activities for children, adolescents, um, and, uh, and families. So it's one of my favorite things about you, Leanna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me just say that, um, for those of you who are listening to this podcast, um, you know, today, um, I, I'm very, very excited that we're having a virtual book launch on March 10th, March 10th at four o'clock Eastern time. That's New York time. Um, uh, and it's people are invited from wherever you happen to be in the world to attend the book launch. And we're going to be doing some book giveaways. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a wonderful way to celebrate the 75 creative authors uh, to this book. Uh, to come together globally and connect with our peers um, and <laughs> to possibly win a copy of the book. That's but I want to just go back um, for a moment. And, and if they want to sign, if you want to sign up for the book launch um, or you're interested in the books, you can go to my website, which is lianalowenstein.com. But I want to just come back to what you said, because, you know, I, I appreciate your comments about the books and the techniques, but I, I really want to just reiterate how very important it is um, to, it's not just about the technique, right? Yes. The te- these techniques are so creative, they're wonderful, they're not gonna be effective mm-hmm. unless they're delivered um, you know, in the appropriate way. So you know, they're only appropriate if they're integrated into an empathically attuned relationship. Mm-hmm. So I really wanna emphasize that. Yeah, yeah, I, thank you for keep coming back to that over and over and over again. Yes, exactly. Um, all right. So we're talking here about these different ways of engaging the child, creating safety in the attuned way, how to welcome them, you know, into the, into the space. Um, 
what else would you love for us to understand about this, this initial beginning part of the therapeutic process? So um, the other thing that I always do um, in a first session um, is um, I, I, I get the child, so the child gets their scrapbook. Um, they also get um, a gift bag um, and I call it the feel better bag. Mm -hmm. um, and in the initial several sessions, um, I teach the child some kind of a self-soothing strategy. Mm -hmm. And then there's some kind of a prop that, that they take home with them to put into their feel better bag they keep by their bed. Mm -hmm. And the prop serves as the visual reminder, the visual cue for them to practice and use these self-soothing strategies. So for example, um, cookie breathing, uh, you know, teaching the child how to do proper diaphragmatic breathing. So, you know, smell the cookie. Oh, the cookie's really hot, blow on it, pull it down. So cookie breathing, yeah. smell the cookie, blow on it to cool it down. And then I have the child imagine their favorite kind of cookie. Mm -hmm. And then the child can draw a picture of their favorite kind of cookie. And the picture of their cookie goes into their feel better bag, which they take home. They keep by their bed. Um, I have the caregiver join the session at the end. The child and I together, we teach the caregiver cookie breathing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, the parent, the caregiver can coach the child at bedtime each night together with them to do cookie breathing. So it relaxes the child in preparation for sleep and it gives the child, you know, a really, a helpful, um, strategy to self calm. Okay. And then, you know, once the child has mastered it, we of course use these strategies in the sessions. So it's kind of, you know, I think it's, it can be really helpful and important to teach the child some self-soothing a self-soothing strategy in the first session because again it helps to calm them um, ground them in the session help them helps them to self-regulate and it also proves to them in a very experiential way that they know how to comfort themselves soothe themselves mm -hmm. yeah beautiful 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 so um any other pieces here before we, I want to, I'm, I'm going to put more, more plugs in here where people can, can find you. Um, any other pieces here, Leanna, again, this, that just help us open our minds to how to think about this. Um, you've, I mean, my mind's already going in so many fun directions just off of this, th this conversation. So I guess the last thing I want to just say, as we talk about, um, you know, tips, tips and techniques for the initial session. So as I've, as I've re reiterated, it's not just about the techniques, mm -hmm. it's about the process and the use of self um, and therapeutic presence. Um, but also it's about playfulness mm -hmm. um, that, you know, children respond to play. Mm -hmm. Children respond when you smile, mm -hmm. that conveys warmth. Mm -hmm. um, when you are, you know, asking the child about, you know, uh, you know, making a comment to them about, you know, oh, I see you're wearing a t-shirt with a unicorn. Oh, that is so cool. Do you like unicorns? I love unicorns. So you want to sort of think about something um, that you can say that, again, sort of provides that immediate connection with the child mm -hmm. um, that's specific to that child. Um, so you know, be creative, be playful, convey warmth, um, and, and also be creative. Take these techniques that I'm sharing with you today, mm -hmm. and I hope it's ignited your creativity, your imagination. Adapt them um, and be creative yourself uh, because I think that kids respond well to these creative ideas that lower the threat level of that initial contact. Yeah, that's, I'm so glad you said that at the end, because that, that's just what I was hearing was we were using these along with our therapeutic presence to help the child feel seen, to help them feel welcome, to help them feel safe, to help them feel like this is a place that I actually can do my work. And this is a safe person that, I, that I'm with. And, um, and I'm just hearing like, th these are just such creative ways to, to address that and to create that experience in, inside of the child. Yeah. So awesome. So great. Yes. 
So Leanna, you already mentioned the, um, the, 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 the book launch party coming up. Um, you mentioned your website. You have a lot of free resources and things on your website also. Um, can you share with our listeners where they can find out more about you, get some free resources, find the books, all that stuff? Yes. So um, I've really tried to make my website a hub of free resources. So on my website, which is my name, LeannaLowenstein.com, um, there's a free ebook of child and family therapy techniques. Um, and I recently just added a whole bunch of new uh, new uh, activities to that ebook uh, of, you know, practitioners have shared their ideas. So it's, it's not my ideas, it's child and family therapy techniques by contributors all over the world. Um, so if you've already downloaded it, check it out again, because there's some new things. Um, there, um, there's always a feature technique also on my website. There's a, an amazing article library, and I know Lisa, you've contributed to that. Mm -hmm. um, articles written by leading experts mm -hmm. in the field on all kinds of cutting edge topics. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an article library for mental health professionals but there's also a separate article library for parents mm -hmm. um, on all kinds of really, um, you know, useful uh, topics. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, you know, some examples of some of the free resources that I have on my website. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want anyone to feel like they have to buy my books, but for people who are interested, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a discount. So um, the discount code is PC14. So P is in Peter. C is in cat. So PC14 will get you 20% off all my books. And if you if you buy four books, you get an extra 10% off. So that's um, that's a discount for you. That is so wonderful. Thank you so much for your generosity, Leanna, with that. Mm -hmm. Listeners, take it, take advantage of that. <laughs> well, Leanna, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, getting us thinking. Thank you for showing up wearing a green wig, making me <laughs> smile, um, creating that sense of connection with you right away for me. So I really got to feel firsthand exactly what you um, have been talking about during this conversation. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing for the play therapy um, community. I appreciate knowing you. Just thank you so much for, for being a part of this. And thank you, Lisa. This podcast is such an amazing resource. I am so touched and honored uh, to be a part of it. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Okay, listeners, put your creative hats on um, and get curious about um, what you can do and how you can be um, as you are engaging the children for the first time and welcoming them into your play space. And as always, um, take care of yourselves. You are the most important toy in that playroom. Until next time, everyone. For more information on our courses and our classes, please go to our website at synergeticplaytherapy.com and check out what we have available to you. And as always, remember that you're the most important toy in that playroom.